Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 314. Well, I'm trying to hurry because shortwave band conditions this morning, and it's um, about 7.05 in the morning in Florida, are pretty good this morning. So I've been trying to hurry and get some uh, receptions test, reception testing done. And I just did two other radios, and now I'm going to go back and do the Grundig G2 Reporter. And I'm going to use my um, Grundig 750 as my source. I'm not comparing it to I'm just using it as a reference. So right now we're going to tune up um, 5 megahertz WWV on the 750. Oop, turn the right knob. That's It's coming, it's coming in pretty good, except I'm getting like what I call lightning crashes um, due to some overcast skies right now. So it's affecting that lower band. But with, when that uh, lightning noise or whatever it is is not there, the signal is very strong. So let's try the uh, G2 on its own. Let me turn this around a little bit. Whip antenna, telescopic antenna. Turn the volume up. And we turn this light off. Yeah, that's a lot of noise there. So I'm not, I'm not hearing much. I'm trying to see if it coming any better. So it's not not picking up WWV in five megahertz. Let me um, let me switch over to an external antenna. Switch over to the same antenna I had hooked to the Grundig uh, 750, and I'll clip temporarily clip this on. Gives me a lot more noise, but I still don't hear the signal there. Let's try 10 megahertz. And excuse me, but I'm kind of hurrying trying to do this test before the band conditions change. Okay, let's tune this to 10 megahertz. That's in internal rip antenna. It's there, but there's a lot of background noise. Let's uh, switch back over to the 750. Clear as a bell. Little bit of background noise. It's on the external antenna. Again, I'm not trying to compare the two. Just use. Now that's. That's the female voice. I believe the female voice is out of Hallelulu. And so it's coming in pretty good. I don't hear. I didn't hear the male voice. It's kind of strange. Conditions are changing. A few minutes ago when I was testing the other radios, I had both the female and the male voice running at the same time on 10 megahertz. Okay, let's go back to this guy, the G2. Lots of noise. Try the external antenna. Nope, didn't help any. Now, quiet. Now, one thing I should be doing when you're using or trying to use, since this doesn't have an external antenna connector and I'm having to use the clip-on, what you should do in those cases is um, collapse the telescopic antenna and then clip on to that so that your, your 
not getting the problem I'm getting, which is a lot of noise being introduced from the room into this telescopic antenna. So let's go to 15 megahertz. Didn't get that too well before. Switch back over to 750 on the external antenna. Absolutely nothing. And the external antenna I'm connected that is connected to the 750 is my G5RV, which is outside. Let's try 15 megahertz here. Just noise. Nothing but noise. External antenna. More noise. Okay, okay. let me try. Uh, I didn't want to do it too often because I could break this telescopic antenna trying to hurry. I'm going to go ahead and collapse it since this is about the last test I'm going to do. And then I'm going to carefully lay it down in its cradle. And then we will clip on. And I'm going to have to raise it a little bit to clip on. Let's turn the sound on first. Okay, it's now collapsed. 15 megahertz. And then now clip on. Nothing. Nothing but noise. Okay, let's go back down to 10 megahertz. It's, it's there, but it's got a lot of noise, so you really can't hear the signal. Um, now, earlier when I was testing the other two radios, I got Radio Australia very clear, so let's try that at 9580. Maybe it takes now. Okay, Radio Australia is coming in pretty good. It's, there seems to be some fading in and out. Let me go back to its own antenna, and I'll raise the antenna. Pretty good. It's coming in pretty good. Again, it suffers from picking up all this RF noise in my room, from my computers, my monitors, my lights, and everything else. So it's not doing too bad. Um, of course, conditions are constantly changing, but based on the testing I did on the other two radios, it's, I don't think it's as good as the Texan 380 I tested, but it's better than the C Crane one I tested. Again, Conditions have changed, so maybe you know, maybe that would influence the results I'm getting right this minute. Um, one other thing to point out about these telescopic antennas, and especially trying to use an external antenna and touching the antenna, you have to be careful about uh, a static charge because you could easily damage your radio by inducing a static charge. So always be sure that number one, uh, especially in countries or areas where uh, it's very dry and there's a lot of static conditions even in your fingers sure you discharge yourself I'm every time I touch my desk I'm discharging myself because I got a metal strip around my desk so you don't want to damage your antenna plus be very careful and you can't see me doing it because I'm too close in but uh, let me zoom up a little bit. Be very careful when you're opening and collapsing your external telescopic antenna that you don't break it off. They're very susceptible to being either broken off here or the thinner elements at the top can easily be broken off. So be very careful about that. So anyway, that's my quick test on the Grundig G2 on shortwave listening and uh, I think it does a fair job um, it's it definitely 
based on the little bit of testing I just did, doesn't do as good a job as the Texan PL380. I think that little 380 is one of the radios that you want to have in your collection um, because it does seem to do a pretty good job and it has a lot of features. That's the show for today. If you get any comments, please leave a comment. If you want to send me an email, that'd be great. Send it to trrs73 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. I guess I'll turn some lights back on in the room. Okay.